Biological warfare. It is best defined as the employment of biological agents to produce casualties in man or animals or damage to plants. These biological agents are often the weapons of choice for terrorist groups because of their ability to devastate large groups of living organisms. Despite their potency, these dangerous organisms are extremely cost-effective and easy to grow and develop. While they are effective in destroying humans, they are far less destructive to the environment than nuclear weaponry and far less expensive to produce. Bioterrorism is not a new invention, but rather a method of warfare that has developed and improved from an early point in history. Biological warfare has changed the way in which countries use weapons both offensively and defensively. Despite the relative sophistication of its employment, the use of this weaponry poses a threat to all mankind. Several types of organisms may be employed in biological warfare. Microorganisms, which are usually single-celled microscopic organisms, are the most popular agents in this type of warfare. Types of microbes that are used include bacteria, viruses, fungi, and protozoa. However, these are in no way the sole means of biological warfare, as the term encompasses any weapon or agent that is or is derived from a living organism. Toxins produced from plants and animals, as well as animals themselves, microscopic and otherwise, are included in this category. Bacteria and viruses are among the most popular agents because of their efficacy, and also because they are difficult to detect. Some bacteria are spore-forming and thus very useful in bioterrorism. Endospores, which are resistant to temperature and extreme environmental conditions, are formed when the environment becomes hostile to protect the bacterium. They are in dormant state until the environment becomes acceptable for them to return to a state of reproduction. These dried spores, such as those formed by Bacillus anthracis, or anthrax, can be easily mixed with powder and inhaled by a victim. There are two types of anthrax, cutaneous anthrax and inhalation anthrax. Viruses are subcellular, non-living particles that can be transmitted through respiratory droplets when inhaled. Viruses such as smallpox can be used in bioterrorist attacks. Any of these agents can be released into the air, into water and food supplies, or directly into the victim or victims. Biological warfare can be traced back in history to as early as 400 BCE. Scythian archers utilized poison arrows, which they would infect by dipping the tip of the arrow into decomposing bodies or into contaminated blood. There have been several instances in the histories of ancient civilizations such as Rome and Greece where literature has detailed the contamination of water supplies with dead animals or other types of decomposing matter. Carthaginian general Hannibal obtained several military victories through the utilization of biological warfare and is reported to have fired clay pots filled with venomous snakes onto enemy ships. A practice that began in the 14th century during the Siege of Kaffa was repeated by the Russians in 1710 as armies catapulted plague-infested corpses over the walls of enemy cities with the intent of causing an epidemic. During the French and Indian War, the British military gave smallpox-infected blankets to Native Americans, and the ensuing outbreak was devastating to their population. The Geneva Protocol of 1925, which prohibited chemical and biological weaponry, was signed by 108 nations, but no verification was established. Anthrax and other agents were employed by Germany in World War I and Japan in World War II for both offensive and research purposes. Today, the practice of biological warfare has been utilized by terrorist organizations. Though most threats amount to little more than a hoax, some terrorist attempts to utilize biowarfare are viable threats. In the 1980s, Iraq launched a biological warfare program that dealt with the development of aerosolized anthrax and other organisms and toxins. Recently, and perhaps most notably, were the anthrax attacks following the 2001 terrorist attack on the World Trade Center. The bacteria were sent through the mail in spore form to the offices of media and government officials, resulting in four deaths. The biggest future threat, however, lies in the combination of anthrax and the smallpox virus, variola major. These two agents are said by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to have the greatest potential for mass casualties and civil disruption. 
they are both highly lethal, can be produced on a large scale, and are capable of transmission through aerosol droplets. Since its eradication by the World Health Organization in 1980, smallpox vaccines are no longer regularly produced, rendering several nations helpless in the event of a bioterrorist attack. The best form of protection is preparedness. Both former President George W. Bush and current President Barack Obama have addressed the nation in making clear the importance of protection against bioterrorism. This new mode of weaponry has drastically changed warfare and causes nations to operate offensively out of fear.